Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the board game. Are you sure? Now this is not gonna be pretty. We're talking violence, strong language, adult content. It's made by Jasko and 20th Century Fox, the creators of the Buffy the Vampire TV show. It plays one to six players, takes roughly about an hour to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you're playing as Buffy, the lead character of the Sunnydale town, or of course, one of her friends. You could be playing as maybe Giles, or you may be playing as somebody like, uh, uh, what is this? Xander Harris uh, and Willow and so on and so forth. There's quite a few characters to choose from. Each character has its own unique special ability, has its own unique starting item, and it has actions that you will be utilizing throughout the game. Each player will get four actions to use, and after all four actions are used from each character, you'll trigger the baddies to move around town. Baddies are attempting to defeat townies, and of course also wound the main characters of the game. <laughs> in about nine hours, moron. And there's an apocalypse track where once enough townies and wounds get put on the board, you will lose. The way you win, however, is you're going to be defeating the monsters of the week. After you defeat three of them, unlock their clues, and solve the clues to find plots of the main big bad, uh, then when three of them are revealed, you'll summon the master or one of the other big bads in the game. Did you really think you could best me here when you couldn't below? If you can defeat all three plots of the big bad before that track reaches the end, you will win by defeating the specific big, big bad monster and succeed in saving Sunnydale from basically ultimate destruction in the game Buffy the Vampire Slayer, a game that um, a lot of you might not know about or maybe they you know at least about the show, but regardless, let's get into it and I'll show you what you get and of course, how to play. Got anything that could make this day any worse? How about the end of the world? No, I can count on you. So here we have the game Buffy, and it's currently set up for three players. And let's go ahead and get into the setup for the game. First, each player will choose a character. Take that character's board along with four actions, three basic and a special. Take their starting items, and of course the first player marker will go to Buffy. The standees, of course, will be placed on the board here after you laid it out in their specific locations. Buffy will go to her house, uh, the professor will go to UC Sunnydale, and then of course if you're playing with Xander, he'll go to Sunnydale High. After the board has been placed uh, and all the characters are placed on them, give each player their starting items. Buffy will start with a stake, Xander will get holy water, the professor will get a tome, and the other characters will get other items. Then you're going to go ahead and shuffle all the decks of cards. The artifact deck, the item deck, uh, the monster of the week, and of course the event deck. Then make sure that you have Buffy with the Slayer Scythe if this is your first game. Additionally, if you're playing your first game, make sure that the big bad is the monster of the week. Uh, sorry, the big bad is the master, uh, which you will be playing with first. Make sure you have his player board, his standee, and his six plot cards. Then flip over an event card for each player playing the game and do the first two things that it says to do. Usually it'll say to place a vampire or a demon in a specific location and or it might say to place a townie in a location. Ignore the final bottom portion of the card only during the setup. Take the Monster of the Week deck, flip over one card, assign the Monster of the Week token to the space it tells you to. This will be the monster that you're fighting, attempting to defeat. It will have requirements and any of their specifics on the card. Then, after that, make sure that you have all the tokens on the board, as well as, of course, all the characters on the board as well. And you're ready to begin the game. It's pretty simple, actually. In the game Buffy the Vampire Slayer, your objective is to defeat the big bad, the master in the first game that you're playing, but there are a ton of other bad guys that you can fight. The master, however, does not show up until the third clue has been solved. How do you get the clues and how do you solve them? Well, you'll need to defeat the monsters of the week. Each time a monster of the week will show up, it'll go to a specific location. You will then need to collect item cards from the game board, use those item cards in combination based on what the card says, and then discard them and flip over an event. When you flip over an event, you'll check the very bottom of the card to determine the symbol of that card. And if the symbol matches the card that you're attempting to defeat, you will defeat that. However, if you fail, then you don't. There is an exception though. For monsters of the week, if you fail a check on defeating that monster, you can remove one of your actions from the game forever, never to be used again. But be careful, because when you use them and you run out, you're gonna be less helpful to the party. 
Once the monster has been defeated, the monster will go away, a clue token will drop in its location, and a new monster of the week will come out, and you will place it on a new location with new requirements and new items that you'll need to succeed. Then search the clue token. When you do so, you're going to unlock a boss plot card, flipping it over onto the table. And after three of them have popped out, you can then summon the big bad. He'll go to a specific location. Like for instance, this one goes to the Hellmouth, And you'll have to go stri strictly straight to him and defeat his plot cards in the same way you would defeat monsters of the week. Get the items you need and defeat them. Uh, the master plot cards have unique specific things that they do when they flip up on the field, whether he is there or not. Specifically, this one says that vampires get to move an additional location during their movement, which is rather nice huh, for the vampires, not necessarily for you, however. And that's the basic idea of the game. Defeat all three plot cards of the specific big bad and uh, banish him <laughs> out of the Hellmouth, and you will win the game Buffy the Vampire Slayer. How you will lose? Well, after you've taken all of your actions and everybody else has on your team, uh, then you're going to have the monsters move. And the monsters will move and either take away townies from the board, basically kidnapping them or killing them, and they'll also wound the characters in the game. Wounds and kidnapped uh, townies will go on this board here, and if it ever fills up, you'll lose the game. How to take your turn? Now, taking your turn is pretty simple. You'll have four actions. Three of them are basic and one is special. The basic ones can only use basic actions. The special one can use basic actions or your specific character special action. The four basic actions are you can search, meaning draw two cards from the item deck, no matter where you are. Uh, then you can fight. Uh, fighting will let you use the fight action either on your board or on an item card that you may have. Uh, use will allow you to use a location's ability, and all these locations have different abilities, so based on where you are is what you can do if you choose to use. And finally, move. You can move literally anywhere on the board, it doesn't matter. Once you move to that location, that is your action spent. The last one being a special action, which can only be taken when you use your special. Basically what happens is, maybe you'll draw four cards from the item deck and discard two instead of drawing two. Or maybe as Buffy, you'll move and fight, or fight and move as a single action. Or as Xander, you'll get to give somebody a basic action for free, and you get to use a basic action when using your special. Specials come at a cost though. Whenever you flip the special action, regardless of whether you use a basic or your character's special action, you'll flip over an event card, thusly populating the board with more vampires, more demons, or townies. And then you'll also do the bottom ability. Maybe it will make you lose townies, maybe it'll let vampires or zombies move, or vampires or demons move, etc, etc. There's different things that, that will be happening throughout the game uh, as you start having events flip up. You can choose to use your specials, or you can choose to use your basic actions in any order order that you want, but whenever you flip over that special token, that's when the events will take place. So it's basically up to you to determine how difficult you really want the game to be. Another thing to note is you'll be taking one action, and then each player after you will take an action. After every player has done all four of their actions, and of course three event cards have popped up in a three player game, then you'll move on to the baddies phase. The big bad, if they are on the board, will do all of their actions, usually involving a check, which is drawing an event card, looking at the bottom, and then based on the check that you have, you check the bottom of that player or the villain's card and doing what it says. Um, or you'll have maybe one of the Monsters of the Week actions activate, sometimes not, sometimes so. And of course the board might have some unique things as well. And then finally, the baddies will move around town. Uh, demons that are on a location with a good guy will actually have the, bad, the good guy take a damage. If a demon is on a space with a townie and nobody else is there, the townie will get removed from the game and placed on the board there, never to be gotten back. So wounds are easier to deal with than the townies being removed. So you always want to take wounds if you can, because you can heal. Townies, not so much. They're gone when they're gone. And then rinse and repeat. Flip over all of your actions and continue take, playing the game. Uh, artifacts are unique in the game. Basically, certain items, like the tome, will let you draw one of these big baddies, and these things are going to be really strong. Usually, they'll give you an action or improve one of your actions. And remember, because you can only have three items total on your player area, uh, you have to be careful of how many you want to keep and how many you want to get rid of, because you'll need items to discard in order to defeat the monster of the week and the baddies plot cards. When the three of these baddies plot cards come out, that's when the big boss will trigger, and you'll have to deal with all three of these guys, so make sure that you have the items needed in order to deal with the master, or whatever villain it is you're fighting this specific play session. And that's the game. Will you defeat the big bad, 
or will your track run out of damage and or townies in combination and you will be forced to play again? <laughs> Which of course you'll want to because Buffy the Vampire Slayer is a fun game. Speaking of fun, let's talk about it. Much like the hit TV series Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the board game has a true grit personality to it. The characters all have their own unique abilities that function based on the characters did in the show. Buffy is very good at slaying, Giles is very good at gathering items, and Xander is really good at helping out, and of course having uh, helping other players achieve their goals as well. And so depending on the characters that you're playing is basically what type of player you want to be in this game. It's fully cooperative and you're trying to deal with the demons and the vampires of Sunnydale, the best you possibly can while working in combination. Be careful when choosing specific characters. If you don't want to attack and you want to defend, make sure that you go ahead and choose somebody like Giles or maybe Xander. Don't choose Buffy because Buffy is going to be going around dealing some serious damage to these vampires. And of course, if you are choosing to play with a big bad, make sure it's a character that you want to fight against because there's a large variety of different big baddies you want to play against. I would always suggest the master first though because he's pretty straightforward and simple as to how he works and more of them will get more complicated complicated and of course more difficult. The Slayer Scythe is a nice item to start with, but it's not needed if you want to have a little bit more of a challenging game. This one basically allows you to potentially take a skill check after defeating a vampire or a zombie, and maybe defeat another one in addition to that on the same space if you're capable of doing so. All the items are based off of the show's items, which is nice, um, and of course the artifacts are also based off of the unique items in the show as well. The Monsters of the Week are also based off of the different Monsters of the Week that Buffy and her crew face and <laughs> it gives you kind of like a little nostalgia feel as you deal with them because they all have function based off of the TV show's baddies. Another little interesting thing I didn't explain is that you can become evil in the game as well. Basically you lose a turn and you'll have to do one of these skill checks on the turn that you become the next turn in which you are evil and uh, you'll see what happens. Maybe for instance we'll flip one of these guys over and it's a pyramid. Um, you'll have to activate one baddie. You can choose though how you want to activate the baddie so that it does as little damage as possible but of course baddies operate in a very specific uh, set of ways. They'll move to a specific character uh, and there's like this little group like A has to go to an unprotected county, then it'll go to a protected county, then it'll go to a player. And uh, so when you activate them they have specific roles or rules but you can try and activate one that's not actually going to uh, hurt anybody if possible. Uh, and that's kind of in, in tandem with the show. Basically everybody in Buffy becomes evil at one point or another for a very short duration of time and the crew will basically uh, help them out and make them become good once again. I really enjoyed this game. It has a really nice cooperative feel. It starts to get a pretty competitive mid to late game, but it starts off fairly soft and easy. You start, you understand how it works. You don't have to have a very specific like countdown timer until of course the big bad pops out. So you want to kind of deal with things before the big baddie pops out. And if you kind of like slow down once he pops out and like you're being meticulous, it might, you might get overrun because the game is constantly dropping out more vampires and zombies on the board as you take specific actions. And uh, so there is this kind of competitive nature midway through the game. But before that, you kind of want to build up, choose your best artifacts just before you have to go in and fight the big bad. But always because of your limit of cards that you can hold, you might not ever want to hold more than one artifact. And which is nice because you can always discard and get new ones. And there's tons of items and tons of artifacts. You're probably not going to go through the full deck until you play like three or four times at least with four players. Uh, the fact that there's wounds and townies too is nice. You kind of have to debate on how you want to take wounds and how many townies you want to go away. What's more important, saving two townies or defeating the monster of the week? You have to kind of make these little moral choices, which is kind of based off of how the TV show worked as well, and I really do like that. The artwork is great. The quality of everything is very nice. The cards are nice. Um, all the different character standees really work very well, and in this case, I really enjoyed the production quality of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the board game. I think this game does an excellent job of representing the TV show. My wife and my friends who have played this with me now have stated that this works very well. The person who made this game was in love with Buffy. They knew everything about Buffy and that is why there's so much heart put into this game, at least as far as understanding all the different characters and the different baddies and how they all work together in certain ways and even the character actions, how they kind of cooperate with each other from the game and based on the TV show. Only thing I don't think I've seen in here is we all start dancing and singing songs. Where's my Buffy the Musical board game Big Betty? I don't know. 
<laughs> but regardless, I really, really, really enjoyed this game. Um, some things that can go um, awry, I suppose, some negatives, I suppose, is if you have players who want to do something else based on what their character is not supposed to be doing, like Giles, you want him, he wants to become a fighter, it's not going to be as helpful for the group. Or if Buffy is that one that's collecting items and going around and trying to deal with the specific locations. Yes, every character can do everything, but each character has this very specific use for them. So select your characters based on how you want to play the game. Don't select your characters and then just do whatever you want because it can lead to not only analysis paralysis, but bad play choices based on the fact that your abilities become less worthwhile um, as you're attempting to go and save the, the town of Sunnydale and how the different uh, actions correspond to what you want to do. This is a fun board game. This is probably one of my favorite Jasco Games board games that I've played in a long time. Uh, I think that it has a little bit to do with that I really like Buffy. And for you Buffy fans out there, I think you're really going to dig this game. It works very well. It's very immersive. It's very cooperative. And it just gives you a huge chunk of nostalgia as far as playing this game and making me want to watch the TV shows right after playing it. I'm not going to say that I did, but I may have watched an episode or two after the stream was over, which I live streamed this game. And... I had a ton of fun playing it. It was really easy to learn the game before playing, and we just jumped into it, and not a lot of confusion, actually, which was really nice. So, if you're interested in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, there's a link down below in the description. For us, this is a solid game based on an IP, and all the quality and everything was just excellent. I was really, really satisfied with this game, and I'm excited to see more of their IPs that they release. I know I've already got the Evil Dead game, this one does a better job as far as gameplay goes, for sure, but both of the games are really highly immersive, which I appreciate when people design games based on IPs. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like I said, there's a link down below in the description if you're interested in picking up the game. You can also go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button. Hit that button so you get notified to see more of our videos that we produce every day, five days or six days a week, and of course our live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like this one. In fact, last week we did play this game, so if you want to see a live stream, it's literally the video before this one, or the one before before that one. I don't know. There's one of the two there. Uh, but regardless, though, I, I just I really like Buffy and this this one did not do it an injustice. They did a good job of this, which is really nice to see. Moonshell Mermaid game. There's an update yesterday showing you the back in front of the cover of the games that my wife has been developing that I've been helping make sure the manufacturing process is going through and everything seems to be going on track. Uh, we'll have our deluxe stuff being milked soon. Our meeples are basically done. Uh, so everything's coming along. That's pretty much all I got for you this time, guys. And as always, I look forward to uh, slaying some vampires with you and Buffy next time. You have fruit punch mouth. What? Ooh.